Please welcome Google's Senior Vice President, Vic Gandotra. Well, good morning, everyone. On behalf of Google, let me extend a very warm welcome to all of you and uh, deep apologies for the electrical problems that we had that delayed this event by 30 minutes. Um, and for the over 44,000 of you who have RSVP to watch this event live uh, over the internet all over the world, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you also for joining us for this Google Plus event. We're here in San Francisco in a warehouse that has been transformed into a beautiful gallery. Uh, all around me are images from photographers on Google Plus, and the images are stunning. But what's even more impressive than the images are the stories behind the images. Uh, I've read every single one of these stories, and many of them uh, almost brought me to tears. Later today on Google Plus, we're going to share these images and the associated stories. And I want to thank the photographers who took the time not only to allow us to use their images, but who took the time to write why these were moments that mattered to them. So to begin, let's just have a hand for those photographers. Now, today's event is broken up into three sections. Um, we're going to first give you an update on Google Plus itself. And boy, do we have some exciting news to share. We're also going to talk about some major improvements to Hangouts. And then the bulk of the event is going to focus on photography and storytelling. Let's begin with Google+. You know, it was September of 2011 that we opened up Google+, to the world. It's hard to believe it's been just over two years that Google+, has been open to the public. And in that short period of time, We've done a lot to improve the service, shipping a new version of Google Plus almost every day. Consider, just in the last four months, just since summer, uh, we've pushed out 20 updates to Google Plus. Things like replacing YouTube comments with Google Plus comments, adding the ability to do translation of any language, um, or the new web editor uh, for desktop for photographs, adding Snapseed-like capability to the desktop. But we're proud to announce that today, we're going to be introducing 18 more features. And I'm going to walk you through some of them. I think you're going to be quite pleased. Now, that product momentum has led to the growth of Google+. In fact, at Google I.O. a few months back, we announced that we had 390 million 30-day active users across Google with, signed in via Google+. We're proud to announce that that number, only a few months later, has jumped to 540 million active users. Even more exciting, just active users in the stream, the core social experience, has gone from 190 million. Today, we're announcing 300 million users. The growth has been fantastic. Um, and of course, that has led to growth in all areas of the product. Consider that. As of now, we are uploading 1.5 billion photos each week to Google+. And that rate is increasing at an incredible rate. All we can do is be humbled by this growth and thank people all over the world, from Asia to Europe, Africa, North America, Latin America, all of which have embraced Google+. Thank you. We're incredibly humbled. Uh, even with our short period of time investing in this product, the only way we know how to say thank you is to continue to innovate and build a product that people truly love. And that's what today's about, showing you some of the new enhancements uh, that we're releasing. Let's talk about Hangouts. Now, there's the Hangout app, there's the Hangout broadcast experience, and then there's Hangout video calls. And we're improving all three today. Let's talk about the Hangout app. We've received feedback from users. And among the top requested features from users have been the following. Number one, sharing location. How many times have you been in a conversation with a friend? And the question has come up, where are you? Well, starting today, you can answer that question with a single tap. There's a simply a button at the bottom, a place button. You click it, and we will get your location from Google Maps and inject it with a single click. I think you're going to absolutely love this feature. Number two, animated GIFs. 
Uh, in our testing, honestly, even I was surprised by how amazing this feature is to express creativity. It's one thing to share an image, another thing to share an animated GIF, and really have a chance to make your friends laugh. Uh, I think this feature will be very, very popular as well. And among the most requested features that we've had from users is to integrate SMS into Hangouts so you don't have to deal with multiple clients. And so we're very proud to announce today that SMS is being integrated into Hangouts so that you can have one place to manage all of your communication from SMS to chat all the way to video in this beautiful Hangout app. Now let's talk about the broadcast experience. You know, we couldn't be more happy to see that broadcast experience being used by so many people. Uh, one famous broadcaster uh, came to me, uh, Sarah Hill, and she mentioned that it was like having a satellite truck in your pocket. You can take a laptop, open up to Google+, go hang out on air, and literally reach an audience of an entire world. Um, and so it's been great to see heads of state like President Barack Obama, to celebrities, musicians, all use Hangouts on Air to reach audiences in a very new and high fidelity way. But we've heard feedback that they want more from Hangouts on Air. They really want a better way to plan those Hangouts, to promote those Hangouts, and then manage them while they're happening. And we're doing all three today. We're giving users the ability to plan a Hangout, and once we know that Hangout is going to be something in the future, why, we'll create a dedicated landing page that you can point your users to and that you can use to promote your event. And then, of course, when the Hangout begins, we have brand new tools that allow you to manage that Hangout, like a producer would, maybe taking the volume of a particular participant and boosting it or lowering it or even taking a participant out of the Hangout. We think these are important tools that are going to further uh, the capabilities of what Hangouts on Air does. Now let's talk about Hangouts as a video calling experience. Um, there too, we've made dramatic progress. We're happy to announce that as of today, across all devices, by default on, for all users, we are gonna have HD on. And it's just gonna lead to a higher quality, better experience Hangout. We've also applied some of the magic that we have in Google Auto Awesome that we apply to photos, we're bringing that technology to the live video experience. So for example, how many of you have ever been in a video call, a hangout, where you see something like this? You know, you have a subject who is brightly lit because he's backlit by the outside light, so he comes out as a silhouette that's very dark. Our algorithms can now detect the human face. We can recognize that this is a backlit situation and automatically boost the light so that you can see the person, even though that might mean increased noise, because we think this is a better experience. Now, we do this automatically, but we're also introducing brand new creative tools that we think users will love. So you can go from something like this to something like this, where you turn on black and white mode. Or, uh, here's another fun one, you can go from looking like this to looking like this with our new spotlight feature, blurring out the background. Maybe you don't want everyone to see exactly what's there. Or if you want to have a little bit more fun, you can go from something like this to something like this with the focus effect. And there are many more that we'll be launching today. I hope you try them out and play with them. It really makes the experience of connecting with another person just more enjoyable and more fun. That's Hangouts. Now let's shift our attention and talk about photos. You know, photos are pretty amazing because they're an amazing way to tell a story a moment that really mattered uh, to you. This particular photo has deep meaning for me. Uh, I serendipitously asked my children to turn around on the beach so I could take a picture. I had no idea my son was gonna walk over to my daughter and put his hands around her. Nor did I realize that my daughter was gonna reach up and hold his hand and put her other hand around him. At that moment, I captured that shot and to me, I suspect decades from now, when I think of my children, that is the shot uh, that'll matter to me. I suspect you too have images that have equal value, that you would consider a treasure. We all do. They're among the most important things we have in our lives. And yet photography today is too hard. It's too hard to create treasures like that. Now, I don't know about you, 
But when I go on vacation, sometimes this is what my table looks like. Right? It's a mass of cables and uh, memory cards and DSLRs and lenses, not to mention where more and more of my photography is taking place, which is on mobile devices or my family's photography equipment, their phones, their cables, or the friends that have joined us as well. This is not fun. It's a nightmare. And the truth of the matter is people have beautiful treasures that have become stranded in these various devices. Uh, and I suspect that's true of you too. Even if you're one of the lucky ones that knows how to get your friends and families and your photos all into one place, your problems are not solved. You have another set of challenges. How do you organize your images? In my father's day, when photography was analog, we used to buy rolls of film. Those rolls of film had 24 exposure, 36 exposure, and typically you carried a few of those rolls of film. Today, we laugh at 24 or 36 exposures. It's not uncommon for us to shoot hundreds of photos in a single day. Look at a young person on a mobile device, and hundreds of photos is the norm, even daily. In that model, in that world, where you have hundreds and thousands of photographs, how do you organize them? How do you manage them? We need a new way. Now, if you're one of the lucky people that can both capture your images, get them in one place, and organize them, then you're faced with the daunting challenge of editing. If you find a beautiful image and you want to edit it, uh, the tools used to make an image great are often out of the reach of most people. They cost money, they're complex, they take time to learn, and for most people, we just give up. And what that means is what suffers is next, is storytelling. Isn't that what we're all trying to get to? Aren't we all trying to tell the story of our lives, of the moments that matter to us? How do we collate our stories and really tell them? Well, at Google, we are looking at doing nothing less than revolutionizing the field of photography across every space I just mentioned. We want Google Plus to make it easier, to make it automatic, if at all possible. Make what automatic? Make backup, highlight, search, enhance, and awesome just happen for you. Let me talk about each of these areas. Let's talk about backup. We are not building a service for lightweight sharing where your image is degraded. We are building a service where you can trust Google with the full resolution of your images so that years from now, you don't have any regrets that you downsize that image, that years from now, you don't realize that some memories were never meant to be downsized. And so thus, Google Plus, by default, uploads images at full resolution, and we're incredibly proud of that leadership. But of course, uh, that's just one aspect. Uh, on mobile devices, we want to make sure those images come up very seamlessly, and we do that on Android. But on iOS devices, we've been challenged. On iOS devices, your images were only backed up to the cloud if you had the Google Plus app open. However, coming soon, in the next version of Google Plus for the iPhone, we will have full-size backups and background sync on. So you can have the same experience that Android uh, users have. Okay, so that's backup. Let's talk about the next state of the problem, um, dealing with your highlights. Um, in this case, you're looking at 683 images. These are the images that I personally took during my trip last year to New Zealand. Now, I don't know about you, but I felt like I needed a vacation after my vacation to be able to go even pick out the best pictures. Have you ever felt like that? Now, with Google+, we can automatically pick out your highlights, your best pictures for you. In this case, the algorithm selected these as my best pictures, and it was amazingly accurate. How did Google+, Plus pick out the highlights? Well, as we described at Google I.O., and we've gotten better since then, we do things like hide away blurry images, uh, get rid of duplicates, downplay bad exposures, our algorithms have understood what people find aesthetically pleasing, and we boost those images. 
We look for landmarks that are recognized by people. And most important, we know who's important in your life. And we make sure that those people are always surfaced in your highlights and that there's the appropriate diversity and many other techniques we use so that you don't have to do the work and we select your highlights for you. Of course, that's great when you want to pick out your best, but what happens when you want to find that one image? What if you're just searching for that one image? Well, there too, we've made tremendous progress. At Google I.O., we demonstrated amazing breakthrough. We demonstrated computer vision, where you could search for terms even when your image was not tagged. And Google, through our deep learning and computer vision, could find that image. Well, we haven't slowed down there. And I'm very happy to announce today that we have added 1,000 more words that Google's computer vision can recognize and that you can search for to bring those images up. Uh, amazing words like Vespa, apple pie, manicure, concert, bridesmaid, hedgehog, hug, kiss, art gallery, graffiti, snowboarding, beach, waterfall, sunset. And it's an amazing experience. Um, I do a search for dog, and it brings up my dog. I do a search for Labrador, and it brings up my Jackson. It's amazing. And if you haven't tried it, you got to go get your photos in Google Plus and try out the amazing computer vision algorithms, which are just getting better day by day. Here's a couple of examples, beach, sunset, snow, without any tagging, we recognize this. And of course, you can combine them. So you can say the name of your loved one at the beach with sunglasses, and we'll bring up that image. But one of my favorite features is at the bottom. Many people miss this feature. Of course, by default, we search your library. But we also give you the uh, option of searching your circles. So imagine that you went with your family and all of you took pictures. As long as you shared those pictures and you have the uh, rights to see those pictures, we will surface them for you. So you can search across your friend's library in a privacy sensitive way and uh, have this magic work across all of those. Pretty amazing. Now, let's move on and talk about enhancing your photos. Now, Ansel Adams, one of my favorite photographers, uh, famously said, you don't take a photograph, you make it. And he was right. Some of the most truly stunning photographs, the photographs we have at this gallery, they were edited. They were made to, be, uh, to have that creative expression that makes them so uh, amazing and startling. And yet, how much time do people really have to do this? How much time do you have? How much time do you want to invest in editing your pictures? Well, at Google, we've decided to give you a full spectrum of options. If you have no time, we'll do it for you with Auto Enhance. If you desire to spend some time on a particular image that means something to you, we have an award-winning mobile product called Snapseed, which we've also recently brought to the desktop. And if you want full creative control, then we have the Nick collection at the high end. And I'm going to talk about improvements to all three today. Let's talk about Auto Enhance where you don't have to do anything. Here's an image, pretty decent image. But if you were a professional or if you had lots of time, how would you edit this photo? Well, I know what I would do if I had all the time in the world. I would balance the colors, I'd decrease the noise, I'd soften the skin, sharpen the details, add a vignette, I'd match the skin tones, I'd brighten the faces, remove red eye, I'd lighten the shadows, I'd add some structure to make the water pop. And if you are a pro, you would do these things. We do them automatically for you at Google+. So your photograph that looks like this automatically looks like that. We recognize the human faces, applied a beautiful vignette, all the other things I talked about to create a subtly enhanced image, which is just better. We're happy to announce today that we're furthering the auto-enhanced capability by giving you more control. We've always allowed you to turn it on and off. But now we're going to give you the option to have a low and high setting. And we're going to give you the ability to control that on an album by album basis. Now, let me show you a demo. Let me show you of how this actually works. So my colleague Matt here is going to bring up a demo. This is a picture I took of my daughter in New Zealand. That is the original picture. 
What happens when we turn on auto enhance at the low setting? Okay, it's brighten, a little bit of a vignette. What about the high setting? Much more of a vignette, much more structure, much more saturation in the clouds. So Matt, maybe you toggle between the original and the auto enhanced. The original and the auto enhanced. Now that is amazing. And that was done automatically. Uh, let's look at another example. A beach shot taken with a cell phone camera. It's okay, it's a nice shot. What does Google Plus do to that image? At the low setting, we brighten the image, we warm up the image. At the high setting, we add a much more structure to the clouds. Once again, the original and auto enhanced by Google Plus. Pretty impressive, don't you think? Okay, that's new capabilities in auto enhance. Now let's keep going. We can go back to slides. Let's talk about Snapseed. Um, as I mentioned, Snapseed is an award-winning uh, editing application. If you don't have it on your iPhone or Android, you're really missing out on an unbelievably powerful tool that's, re that's very easy to use. Well, we continue to invest in Snapseed, and I'm very proud to announce the addition of a new filter that's amazing. The filter is called HDRscape, and I'm gonna need to explain this to you. First, let me explain what HDR is, for those of you who are unfamiliar with HDR. Um, as some of you realize, the human eye can see about 15 stops of light, a very wide dynamic range. But even the best cameras today don't have the range of the human eye. And so when a camera takes a picture, even the best camera, the picture does not represent what you saw. And so modern photographers have found the clever trick to solve this problem. What they do is they take a professional camera, they put it on a tripod, and they shoot the same image with multiple exposures. They deliberately shoot one that's underexposed. They shoot one that's exposed correctly. And then they shoot one that's overexposed. And then they use complicated and expensive and time-consuming software that takes those images and brings them together and creates an HDR photograph that looks like this. That's pretty amazing. And we have tools at Google that allow you to do this in a really amazing way. But for the average person who has a mobile device, who doesn't have a tripod, who doesn't know how to shoot multiple exposures, this type of photo seems out of reach. All of that changes today with this new HDR filter. Now, some of you may be saying, wait a minute, Vic, I have a camera. I have a mobile device that says HDR. Why are you saying this is new? Those systems approximate HDR, or what we call tone mapping, by looking at pixel brightness. We are not using that approach here. We believe we're the first algorithm on mobile that's actually looking at pixel edge contrast. Now, that approach is computationally much more advanced, and it allows you to have detail that really pop, and we believe we're the first to bring this to mobile devices. Now, that's enough talk about the details. Let me show you how amazing it is. We're gonna drop into Snapseed, and we're gonna show you uh, an image. Remember, this is not multiple images. This is a single image, one image. Let's take a look. Okay, it's up uh, behind us. Uh, it's a carousel. Now, the carousel, you can see, is uh, exposed very poorly. You can see the sky is exposed, but the carousel itself is very dark. Matt is going to touch one button, the HDR scape button, and we're gonna apply HDR to that image and look at the difference. Isn't that amazing? I hear lots of wows. Single click, okay? That is incredible. Um, and uh, let's show you uh, another image. Why don't we show one more example? Don't you wish your images could look like that? You can by downloading Snapseed today and playing with that filter. Here's another example. This is a much higher quality image. It's not as out of balance as the last one. Um, can HDR scape make this better? Watch what happens. One click. Wow. Isn't that incredible? And of course, with Snapseed, you get to control the strength of the filter. So by swiping left or right, Matt's able to control how much of that effect that he wants. Now, this doesn't work on every image. This works particularly well on landscape images, structure images, so try it. Uh, with people's faces, it's not gonna work as well. 
But on images like landscape and the ones we showed you, it's a dramatic breakthrough. Um, and we think users are going to love being able to tell their stories with this new tool. Okay, let's go back to slides. Now, as I mentioned, for those people that want the ultimate creative expression, Google at the high end offers the NIC collection. These are my favorite tools when I have time to go really deep. And these tools like Color Effects Pro, Define, uh, HDR Effects Pro, uh, Sharpener Pro, Viveza, uh, Silver Effects Pro uh, are renowned in the industry. Talk to any of your friends who are photographers, professional photographers, and they likely use these tools. Recently, we lowered the price of the collection uh, down to $149. And I'm very proud to say that we continue to invest. And today, we're adding a brand new uh, feature to that collection, Analog Effects Pro. This is an amazing uh, addition. What this particular application allows you to do is explore the classic cameras uh, with different types of films and lenses. Once again, this is best uh, demonstrated. So let's show you. Let's show you. Let's, let's open up Analog Effects Pro. Matt's opened it up here, and he's got an image that he's, that's been taken, a very high quality image, but he wants some creative control to render that old time look. On the left hand side, he can choose different cameras. He can choose toy cameras, vintage cameras. He's going to choose a wet plate look. And by selecting that wet plate look, he's, you're going to see how dramatically he's going to be able to alter the look and feel of that. So he's made that wet plate look. Now he's going to add some, some color, some saturation. Uh, you notice there that he's got exactly what he wants. And now he's adjusting the bokeh. He's putting the bokeh on the bride's face and aggressively blurring out the background. So if you look at the edges, you really blur out, uh, like if you had a lens that could do that. And finally, it's a little bit cold, so he's going to boost the warmth to make the image a little bit more appealing. And now let's look at the original and look at the final product. Incredible creative control. Um, and we think that users of the NIC collection are going to love this. By the way, if you paid already for the NIC collection, this comes to you for free. And uh, I think uh, it's going to be a, a fantastic resource. OK, let's go back to slides. Auto Awesome has been a massive hit since we've introduced it uh, at Google I.O. Millions of these get shared uh, every day. Uh, and produced by Google. So it's uh, super exciting. And it's really about telling your story in a way that no single image ever could. For example, this is a nice set of images. But when Google uh, Plus sees these in your account, we gift to you, for your eyes only, an auto awesome motion, which is an animated GIF of your image. And people find these delightful. And of course, as the previous slide said, there are many types of auto awesomes that we do automatically on your account. Starting today, we're introducing uh, two more auto awesomes. Let me show you. The first is auto awesome action. Whenever we see that from any camera, you've taken pictures that are action sequence, we will then gift into your account something that looks like this. Pretty amazing. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, what happens when the subject that's moving uh, obscures itself? Does that ruin the auto action sequence? Well, Google is smart enough to recognize that there's interference with the subject, and we do something very clever. What we do is we reduce the alpha channel on the overlaid images. So you get a beautiful ghost background, and then take the final image and turn the alpha channel all the way up so you get something like this automatically. Isn't that fantastic? Let me talk about another one. That it's one of my favorites. How many of you have ever had someone take a picture of you uh, and someone you love? <laughs> exactly, I hear the laughter in the room. You've all had this experience, right? I mean, which one of these images would you say is good? Even if you pick the best image, like this is the best image, it's not really that great. There's so many other things that are moving in the frame that it's really a distraction. And so today, we're announcing Auto Awesome Eraser, where we just eliminate anything <laughs> that's moving. Isn't that great? Isn't that fantastic? You can clap if you want. Uh, and this is uh, available today. And in some cases, by the way, uh, Google Plus will recognize 
that we can give you all three. For example, here's one of our teammates, Tally. Uh, she's jump roping uh, with a bridge, across a bridge, and we recognize there's motion. So we gift an animated uh, a gift into that uh, account. We also recognize there was action, so we also create this. And then finally, we also add an autumn awesome eraser, <laughs> where she's completely gone. It's really the best way to tell your story however you want, okay? All right. Now, here's another amazing statistic. In the two years since we started Google+, we have seen a 20x increase in the number of videos being uploaded to Google+. It has, it has shocked even us, and we look at the growth rate of those videos. Now, in some ways that's good, in some ways that's bad. What do you think? Is it good or bad? Well, maybe you look at your uh, photos and videos after a vacation, and you see something like this. I've got photos, I've got videos, they're all mixed together. How do I manage them all? Let me blow your mind for a moment. Imagine that Google could do what it did for photos to videos. I mean, imagine if there was a system that could analyze your videos and automatically make them better. Like maybe it could stabilize the video. Maybe it could interpret the video and figure out which parts of the video were the most relevant. Maybe it could edit the video and slice them up and then add all of the videos together and combine them in the appropriate sequence. Or let's, let's dream a little bit further. Imagine that it could automatically pick music that should go to that video. What if it also recognized there was a cluster of photos that was taken at the same time and it applied the photos to that video as well? No, no, let's, let's push a little bit further. What if we could do all that and our machine learning algorithms would look at the action in the video and make the scene cuts timed to the music that you picked. That's kind of crazy. Now let's go one step further. Imagine that Google did all this while you were living life and you just got a notification on your Android phone. And the notification said, hey Vic, Google Plus has created an auto awesome movie for you. And all you had to do was look at it, click it, and share it. Well, I'm proud to announce that's what we're doing. And we're announcing today Auto Awesome Movies. We believe the most advanced capability ever delivered. This is not some little local client editing system. This is the power of Google, of machine learning uh, applied to videos and photos. Why don't we show you what it looks like? Now, as I mentioned, we think the primary experience will be a delightful notification that you just get. And that's how you'll experience the product. But for users who want to actually force Google Plus to create uh, a, an auto awesome movie, we also have a manual flow. And what we're gonna demo here is the manual flow. But recognize that for most people, it'll just come through a notification. So in this case, Matt has his gallery open, and he's gonna just select some images and video, okay? These are unedited. These are raw video. Uh, much of the video is shaky and confusing, and he's just selecting some, some uh, pictures and video, and he's saying, create the movie. And Google has created a movie for him. Let's see what it's done. Let's just hit play. Okay, Matt, 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 why don't you stop it? Why don't, why don't you just stop it there for a second? Okay, so it stabilized the video, brought everything together, added music. Okay, that wasn't cool enough. Watch what happens when Matt swipes his finger across the video. You, there you go, totally new styles, punk. Glamour, Showtime, uh, keep going through just a few of them. And let's go back to the previous one and hit play. Now look how the total feel changes. Okay, let's pause it. Let's keep going further. What if Matt wanted to spend more time interacting with the video? There's a button in the upper right hand corner, the little pencil edit button. And once Matt clicks on that, why well, we'll go into a timeline mode and show uh, Matt everything that Google did to create that scene. And maybe uh, Google got it wrong. Or maybe Matt, at his at an editorial uh, perspective, doesn't want something included. All he has to do is select it and swipe it, and it's gone. 
That's how easy it is to edit the video. Now, maybe he wants to change the duration expand or contract a particular scene. He can do that as well with his finger, just select, trim it, uh, 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 and then tell Google he's done. By the way, it gets more advanced than that because after he's done trimming, we give him further controls, like selecting the duration of the video. He can go to the top and tell Google how long does he want this video to be. Does he want it to be 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes? And Google will then look at that parameter and recalculate everything, including which images and videos should be included to fit that time constraint. Amazing, completely uh, uh, amazing editing that's done for you by Google. And finally, what if he wants to change the music? Well, we've added uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of licensed tracks that you can add to your videos. And you can see here, Matt's gonna select something completely different. He spent a few minutes editing the video. Let's watch this auto-created video. Pretty fantastic, don't you think? All right, yeah, thank you. Okay, to summarize our event, uh, we talked about the momentum Google Plus has. And once again, we can't thank the community enough. Uh, 540 million 30-day actives is amazing. We're thrilled to watch this product and service grow across the world. And we're just getting started. With Hangouts, the app, the broadcast experience, or video calling, we continue to invest and continue to listen to feedback and make it better. And then finally, with photos, look, the cloud is not just about storing your photos. Google aims to revolutionize photography in not only how you store your photos, how you organize your photos, how you tell your story across photos and videos, because we think these are the moments that matter in our lives, and we're just getting started. Once again, thank you for coming. Thank you for the artists that contributed this, and I hope all of you enjoy uh, this gallery. Thank you.